Today, Joe Biden announces a ban on Russian oil imports and the Florida Senate passes a bill banning instruction on sex and gender for K through third grade. Of course, the left has a problem with that. We will get into all of that and more. And it all starts right now. Welcome to the news and why it matters. I am Sarah Gonzalez, today joined by my friend, Yaku Buyans, Blaze TV contributor and host of The Bottom Line. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Uh, also joined by my other friend, Pat Gray, <laughs> host of Pat Gray Unleashed, which you can find on Blaze TV and uh, wherever you get your podcasts as well. I appreciate you being here as well, Pat. Great to be here. We're trying to be very formal today. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for being here, gentlemen. Now, for the stories of the day, uh, Joe Biden t earlier today, this morning, announced a ban on the United States importing Russian oil and natural gas. He said that this is the uh, main artery of Russia's economy. Therefore, we are going to target it. Um, he wants to hold Putin accountable, he said. Let's listen to Joe Biden earlier today during his press conference on banning imports of Russian oil and gas. We're banning all imports of Russian oil and gas and energy. That means Russian oil will no longer be acceptable at U.S. ports and the American people will deal another powerful blow to Putin's war machine. This is a move that has strong bipartisan support in the Congress and, I believe, in the country. Americans have rallied, support, have rallied to support their Ukrainian people and made it clear we will not be part of subsidizing Putin's war. Uh, now, this came after mm, there were a lot of Republicans, a lot of people on the right, like, hey, why wasn't this the first thing uh, that we did, I guess. But um, the president said his decision came after consulting with European allies. Uh, he said some are not able to join the United States in banning the oil, but the, the EU is going to reduce imports of Russian energy by two thirds, uh, even though it gets 40 percent of it from Russia and the United Kingdom is set to phase out Russian oil imports by the end of 2022. Uh, so this is what it is now. I just, it, this just does not feel like it's getting better. It just yeah. feels like it's ramping up to just get worse and worse and worse. And uh, the United States participation in it just continues to make me nervous. Yesterday on the show, we talked about uh, Blinken coming out and saying, you know, um, that they, NATO giving a green light to send fighter jets to Ukraine. That was completely fine. Uh, and it, it just is making me a little nervous. Are you guys mm. nervous as well? Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, <laughs> and, and this is World War Three. You mm -hmm. know, a couple of things he says. I'm sure the American people will join us as well, and this is going to deliver a blow to Russia. It's also going to deliver a significant blow mm. to the American people. Right. Why? Mm -hmm. You can't turn a supply off without turning another valve on. Well, and you know, he might talk to, he's talking to Iran, Saudi Arabia, no, 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 Venezuela, equally, all of our friends, equally, right? Equally, equally catastrophic yes. problem. Another mm -hmm. war will be fought and we will be back in the Middle East and fighting another war all while sitting on our own reserves. And yes, it should have been the first thing, but it should actually even have been, hey, let's drill, baby, right, drill. Exactly. Call Sarah Palin, let's mm -hmm. drill, baby, drill. And that's what conservatives were calling Absolutely. for, right? The and then ban Russia, right, right? right? Not tap into our reserves. Now it's we're going to shut it down again, little virtue signaling. Oh, so you're going to trade one of your friends who used to be your friends just a couple couple months ago, Putin, for another one of your friends in the Middle East, some chic sheikh or whatever, you know, in the Middle East. And the American people are going to pay. I paid 416 today in Dallas today. Mm -hmm. It'll go to five. It'll go to seven. We've got people in California, friends of mine now saying, hey, we can't run our properties because they run on diesel and generators. Can't afford it. You know, and so the American. So thank you, Joe. You know, great virtue signal. Shut down Russian oil. Of course, we should shut down Russian oil. But where's it going to come from? That's the question everybody should ask. What what deals being brokered on behalf of the American people that we did not vote on mm. versus the answer is right here in Texas, right here. The oil companies are ready. I've spoken to so many of them this week. They're like, let's go. Yeah, let's bring that baby back down to sixty five dollars a barrel. Let's get American economy booming. Let's create jobs. Let's do all these things. It's actually a great opportunity for Uncle Joe to have an actual real victory, mm -hmm. right? But again, mm -hmm. if 
fumbles the football. Well, in his State of the Union, he continued to try to pull from uh, President Trump's old agenda. We, America first, you know. Let's We need to bring all of these jobs back to America. We need to do all these things for America. Uh, it doesn't seem to be like that's what you're doing. No, after the step one, his first day he cut off the uh, Keystone XL pipeline. Yep. Wow. The yep. first day. Wow. Uh, and he's cripp he crippled oil uh, reserves ever since by he's taken 26 steps to regulate the oil and make it harder for oil companies, American oil companies, to get American oil out of American soil. It's it, it, it's despicable mm -hmm. and it's asinine. Mm -hmm. And we're going to have a real problem. Mm -hmm. We think four dollars a gallon. I just paid four nineteen. I think on Friday. $92 to fill up my gas tank. Mm. That's going to be like a bargain compared to what yes. we're headed towards. Yes. Um, if we don't do something to supply ourselves with oil, yeah. we could not only supply ourselves with oil, but we could cut Europe's dependence on it too. We could Absolutely. Start, we could export to Europe. Today. Could, yeah. Today. Today. We, yes. could, we could be sending oil to Germany and everybody else who's hooked on Russian cheap, crappy oil and and we could play that part and and Russia could be completely isolated mm -hmm. but because Biden is uh, Mr. Global Warming yeah uh, we are not in that position. Which right is, now. but we're the cleanest, like we have the cleanest process, though. Yeah, I mean, the, the way that we're getting we it from Russia cleanest and all fracking. these other places, oh, they don't Pat care. I just said something that nobody's talking about. Nobody. And I got a huge oil history. Pat just mentioned something. Russian oil is not light, sweet, crude. No. Yeah. Light, not. sweet, crude is clean, crude. Yeah. It mm -hmm. is filthy, yeah. Yeah. dirty. Just buying it in any way, you're not supporting. So it's a joke on the left. You know, the mm -hmm. whole thing is a joke. We have light, sweet crude. We've got incredible crude in this country. It's a phenomenal point you're making, right? And we're responsible. The oil companies, heck, you can't walk in a single building in Dallas anymore and it's not LEED certified. It's green buildings. The buildings are clean. It's responsible sourcing of the materials. We're an amazing country that does the best in the world with, with energy, responsibly, but it doesn't fit the agenda. And I want yeah. the American people to hear, you do not matter to this party, to this administration, because if you did right now, they would be pumping capital into this economy from around the world. We're creating jobs like crazy. They don't care a lick. Meanwhile, people are going to starve. Yeah. Yeah. Well, do I drive or do I eat? Mm -hmm. Do I drive to work or do my, does my kid take, you know, a class? Do you know what do mm -hmm. we do? This is what it's going to come down to for people in, in, in middle America. 100%. And instead of helping, uh, like you mentioned, instead of coming up with a solution for the American families who are suffering, they're just instead standing there lying to their faces saying, well, I mean, this is, oh, your gas prices are rising. It's only because of Ukraine. That's why. Yeah, You're what just going to have to take one for the team. Are you patriotic or are you not? Almost all of that rise came before the invasion. Right. I know. I'm like, we're not that stupid. Oh, yeah. I, that's what I can't figure out, Pat. Are uh, we are not? I hope we're not. Are we? I, I don't know. Do yeah. we have that short of a memory? I, I don't know because I watch it and I'm like you. I'm like, how the hell would anyone buy this? Dollar eighty six, Trump. Dollar mm. eighty six. When just, he left office, just hear it. Yeah. Dollar like, eighty six. That feels like four nineteen, guys. Yeah, Fifty amazing. years ago. This is this is in in t fourteen months. That's incredible. Mm. That's incredible. And mm -hmm. again, they're telling us the it's going to get worse, go not better. Pat's paycheck didn't go up. Right. We'd like a bigger contract. Right. I'm sure maybe, hey, Me come, too. On, come on, guys. Come it. on, Tyler. Let's do it. <laughs> From your guys. mouth to God's yeah, ear. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Well, but, 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 and that is inflation. <laughs> yeah. It's not, in, yep. it's not yep. incremental <laughs> growth across the board. It's like, Hey, all of a sudden, just a chunk of your paycheck is just gone for mm -hmm. just yeah. doing what you do. Yeah, they said the average American's going to spend $2,000 more this year. Two, and, and we're not even done yet, so it's probably going to—it's likely right. going to be much more it's than that. It's not sustainable. Two thousand a year in extra gas costs, plus a thousand a year in extra food prices. Three thousand dollars to the average American who's making fifty thousand dollars a year. They don't have. I don't that know money. how you do it. They don't. They don't have that extra money. No, to you got to cut back somewhere else. Yeah, because Doug McMillan, CEO of Walmart, all these guys, Frank Jimenez, CEO of, 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 of you know Nestle America, these guys are going. Well, we got to pass some of this cost to the customer somehow, the tr yeah. freight, the transportation. Mm -hmm. so when people have to understand, when energy cost goes up, we are a nation that transports everything. Nothing's local. Mm -hmm. Hardly anything is local. Your berries come from Mexico. Mm -hmm. your, your produce comes from Yuma and, so and Salinas avocados. Valley. Yeah. You know, it, it travels, <laughs> right? So mm -hmm. you have a car. Mm -hmm. And so you pay. It's on the road. Mm -hmm. It's on a truck. Yeah. So it's not just the price at the pump. 
it's also the price of the pump for the truck that's delivering your food to Absolutely. the store. Right? It's insane. It's compounded. And it, it's, it's out of control, to it, be honest. It's interesting, too, because even you would think, obviously, this is affecting all Americans, not just conservatives. It's a, everyone is paying more. Everyone is paying mm -hmm. higher prices. Everyone has to be seeing this rise at the pump. And yet, you know, I ta everyone's talking about how much they're paying at the gas pump because it's it's so uh, shocking, right? I posted about how much I paid at the gas pump. And Look you know what that. I heard from liberal? That's disgusting. Look 559. That. Just for regular, by the way, you're screwed if you get Supreme or diesel. Look at that diesel Diesel, price. 599. Mm. Chad told me here in Texas he paid $5 yesterday. But um, you know what they say? The, the, these elitists, these liberal elitists, what they say when you say something like, I paid $90 to fill up my, my tank. I paid $81 mm -hmm. to fill up my tank. Do you know what they say? They say, well, maybe you should just buy a, a Tesla. Why don't you just buy a Tesla? I'm like, yeah. Yeah, let me go oh, spend oh, 120 grand on a Tesla. Right. Oh, oh the yeah. Model X right. now, 150. Oh, okay. And 50, okay. Well, damn. If I'm complaining yes. about $81 for my tank, do you really think I have 120,000 yeah. to spend on a Tesla, Not a you problem. idiot? Yeah, here's what I say. Shut your mouth because it's an 18-month <laughs> waiting list right yeah. now on a Tesla. Just the hypocrisy is insane. And by the way, the same people have a chef and someone who grocery shops for them. Yeah. Yeah. And, and they couldn't even tell you what they pay for gas because they get driven around. They haven't even seen the credit card statement in the last 10 months. Right. You can't listen to those people. Yeah, yeah. You can't, those they're are not, not real they're people. They're not serious okay? people at those all. Those people, you can't listen to middle America. Go talk to the guy that has three kids in school, in, in public school, that works two jobs, his wife's working. Go talk to America. Yeah. Right? Go Did you see what Chuck Todd said on Sunday about Americans complaining about gas prices? It's like, oh, okay, you've got the money. You, you just have to wait for your goods a while longer. It's a little bit of an inconvenience to pay these higher prices. Guy makes $4 million a year. To him, I'm sure it's just a little inconvenience. $4 million a year, yeah. Yeah, wow. we, if we all made four million a year, uh, we could we could have that attitude. They just don't get we it. We could fifty grand. There's yeah. no way people could afford this. But it, it's so bizarre to me because I I look at these people and of course he's in his bubble, right? Mm -hmm. And so, but like, doesn't he have family members who are regular people? You would think. Does he ever talk to them? Does he ever have anything to do with them? Because you would think that at least these people they live in their bubble, but. They should at least be talking to people that they mm -hmm. know who aren't exactly like them. It's bizarre. Sarah, I don't, Sarah honestly, you don't think? I don't think you've been to DC many yeah, times. Yeah, sadly. They Too do not times. know that they're on planet Earth. They are in a different universe, man. Yeah. They mm -hmm. drink each other's Kool Aid. The, no, I that, thought you were going to say something else. <laughs> Kool Aid sounds way better than. <laughs> well, 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 yeah, some of them drink the blood too. Yes, <laughs> but no, they 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 are just so out of touch, right? And and. Uh, Jason Aldean has this amazing song called The Flyover States, right? Mm. That's America. I'm not saying someone who lives in New York's not American. Prove it. Mm -hmm. Prove yeah. it by mm -hmm. caring about the rest of the states. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, look, I think we're in good hands uh, because when it comes to the Russia-Ukraine uh, conflict, the, the United Nations has banned staff members from referring to Russia's invasion of Ukraine as a war or invasion. So, I, look, they, <laughs> they said some specific examples of language to use and not use at the moment. Use conflict or military offensive and not war or invasion when referring to the situation in Ukraine. By the way, regarding the Ukrainian flag, the email noted, do not add the Ukrainian flag to personal or official social media accounts or websites. This is a reputational risk. Mm. So... It's apparently not an invasion it's, when it's, Russia comes in. I guess we don't it's want to offend uh, Putin. No, is, is we don't want to offend to him. No. Because they are on the spigot. Yeah. They're on the teeth. You have to yeah. understand, Italy and France, they have no other option. They don't have the relationships with the Middle East. They get oil from Russia. They're mm -hmm. on the on teeth. This is what I'm saying. You said earlier, America right now, step in. There are customers to be had. Mm -hmm. yeah. This is like, this is like yeah. taking candy from a, a kid. Yeah, a gold mine easy. right now. It's mm -hmm. the gold rush. No, but they're, they're on the teeth. They're on the Russian teeth. But, hey, it's not a riot. It's a peaceful protest. We just have fire behind us. Change the <laughs> right, language right, again. Right, right. No, Everything's it's fine. war. People are dying. Yeah. Tanks mm -hmm. are rolling in the civilian streets. Right. It's yeah. war. Yeah. Uh, well, and again, I know we got to go to break, but it's... But 
I mean, they they were just talking about potential war crimes. Right. You had the Secretary of State, you had Blinken on doing the, the press circuits, talking about that just over the weekend. Yes, it does look like there are war crimes. We're going to investigate it, but don't, but make sure not to say war <laughs> or invasion, okay? You don't want to call things for what they are because, you, again, as Pat said, you might offend Putin, and you don't want to do that. They're just conflict misdemeanors. Yeah. No, not war crimes. They're conflict misdemeanors. And they're just, you know, it's just a, it's just a, a discussion. Right. They're just having a discussion, I'll just say, a dispute. The B- Biden, his whole administration are anti-American, as anti-American as you, I thought the squad was bad. <laughs> they yeah. make the squad look like, like child's play. Yeah. This is, I can't, I'm an immigrant, guys, I'm, I'm perplexed. Sorry, we gotta go to a break. No, you're fine. Tommy John's amazing, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just perplexed as an immigrant. I can't like what is wake what does wake up America really look like at some point where you go you've been fleeced you have been mm-hmm. hoodwinked these people are not for you they have never been they will never be they right. will rape plunder and steal you blind and yeah. pretty soon it's going to be too late to wake up it's going to be too so late too. I think so too uh, all right well on that optimistic note mm-hmm. uh, we've got more to come including the Florida Senate passing a bill banning instruction on sex and gender to young children and of course. The left has a problem with that. We will get into that once we thank our sponsor, Tommy John. So, uh, look, life is too short to spend your mornings getting ready for work in clothes you don't want to wear, okay? We know your clothes are full of business clothes that uh, you're probably not likely to wear again, uh, especially if you are working from home these days because informal is the new formal. But... You have good news. Now you can be ready in five for your nine to five with new Tommy John loungewear. Uh, They're very comfortable. They're very fashionable. And uh, let me just tell you, if you can be fashionable and comfortable while you are doing so, it makes everything way more enjoyable. Uh, They have very, very stylish joggers, uh, bralettes, leggings, pajama sets, uh, all with micromodal fabrics and extended inseams. They're going to give you a really big stretch and a bunch of flexibility. And I look, I'm speaking from personal experience here. Tommy John literally makes the softest clothing I've ever put on my body. I these mm-hmm. both of these guys are shaking their heads mm-hmm. right now. It, is it like when it's you awesome. first heard when you first heard about Tommy John, you're like, you guys, they, they've got that's got to be all hype, right? It's, I, that, was that was my expression. That was my expression. But yeah. guys want comfortable clothes too, honestly. For sure. Yeah. Too many years yeah. we had jeans that were rock hard. The first stuff. thing I do when I get home every day is put on Tommy John. Me too. Loungewear. That's first what I always say. I'm like, you guys don't believe me. I li- I don't want to <laughs> deal with my family until I put them <laughs> <Right>. on. <laughs> right. It makes everything easier to deal with. Crying baby, whatever. As long as I'm wearing my Tommy Johns, I know I can deal with it. Uh, by the way. When you go there, keep in mind returns and exchanges are free with their best pair you'll ever wear or it's free guarantee. So you can get 20% off right now off your first order at TommyJohn.com slash Y. That is TommyJohn.com slash Y. See site for details. Uh, Earlier today, the Florida Senate passed the Parental Rights in Education Bill. This is uh, a potential law that would ban teachers in, this is kindergarten through third grade. So what, what ages is that? Five, six seven, maybe mm-hmm. eight, or five, seven. six, seven. seven. Well, five, six, seven. Uh, you, I have a fourth grader. I should know this. Maybe eight. Uh, yeah, depending eight, yeah. on, I think. So five through eight. Uh, this it's would, a lot like eight, man. You're, you're so mature. You yeah. can handle all of the sex ed at eight. Right, right, right. Exactly. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, once they turn eight. Once they turn eight, you can tell them anything. Yeah, they have, they're having anything. sex all over the place. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, but so kindergarten <laughs> through third grade, this would ban teachers from providing instruction on gender identity and sexual orientation, yes. and it would require schools to notify parents if there has been any change in a student's physical, emotional, or mental well-being. Uh, meaning, uh, the teachers can't quietly groom your children behind your back, which they've been doing, which they have been doing, uh, and it would also provide legal recourse to parents to sue if they believe a school has violated any of those agreements. Um, And teachers would, would, uh, it would, it would direct teachers to withhold certain information. I'm sorry, you would be allowed to sue if they withhold certain information. Uh, So look, the Democrats are very upset about this because they, like, they, they want to indoctrinate your children. Mm-hmm. They want to do it so badly, and they, and they want to confuse them. And so the Democrats were upset. They were calling this, you know, this is, this is targeting gay people. This is targeting the LGBT uh, community. And they, for some reason, thought that it would be a good idea mm-hmm. yesterday to walk through the state capitol building in Florida and just, like, chant gay which I don't know what that's doing, <laughs> but uh, here is the Democrats at their best, actually, watch. These 
it's embarrassing. Just, it's, it's so embarrassing. it's it's cringeworthy. And you look mm -hmm. at this and you're like. Who are the idiots who are electing these people? This is absurd. So uh, so the Florida Senate has passed it through. And as I said, uh, the, the LGBT advocates are trying to paint this as a discriminatory bill. You're mm -hmm. targeting gay people. And so they've named it uh, the Don't Say Gay Bill. Obviously, that's not the name of the bill. I just told you what the name of it. It's parental rights. Uh, so Ron DeSantis, who is just a boss, I just love him. I just love him with every ounce of my being. Uh, Ron DeSantis was, was giving a press conference and a reporter tried to ask him about the bill, framing it, of course, as the don't say gay bill. And Ron DeSantis was having absolutely none of it. Let's watch that exchange. What critics call the don't say gay bill is on the Senate floor. Does it say that in the bill? I know that you support Does it say that in the bill? I'm asking, you I'm asking you to tell me what's in the bill because I'm you are pushing right. false narratives. It doesn't matter what critics say. Well, it says it bans classroom instruction on sexual identity and gender orientation. I for who? Support. For, for, for grades pre-K through three. I so five-year-olds, six-year-olds, seven-year-olds. And um, the idea that you wouldn't be honest about that and tell people what it actually says, it's why people don't trust people like you because you peddle nice. false narratives. And so we disabuse you of those yes. narratives. <laughs> and we're gonna make sure that parents are able to send their kid to kindergarten without having some of this stuff injected into their school curriculum. Yes. You, would think, you would think that this is something that yes. Democrats and conservatives, everyone could all agree we used on. To. You we would think. Used to. I I mean, what not happened? that long ago. It wasn't like the 1940s. It was the 2000s. The <laughs> early 2000s, we agreed on these kinds of things. Leave the kids alone, mm -hmm. okay? Don't propagandize my kids, and certainly don't bring a bunch of sexual content into their lives. I'll take care of that. Mm -hmm. First of all, I don't want that at school at any age, frankly. Right, right. I'll take care of that. Right. But if you must, you know, when you're an adult, when you're or a teenager at least, Maybe when they're 14, 15, 16. Yeah, certainly they haven't gone through puberty at kindergarten through third grade. It's absolutely outrageous that they would be trying to uh, push this stuff down the throats of five, six, seven, and eight-year-olds. It's unconscionable. Yeah. They don't, I don't want them to be hearing about heterosex at that right, age. Exactly. Why would I want them to hear about homosexual sex at that that's age? Right, I don't. Mm -hmm. That's it's, right, Pat. It's madness. And that's how far we've come in this country. That's how far uh, the degradation is, has, has taken place. It's, uh, it's really sad and frightening. Yeah, it really is. That's right, Pat, because you're being honest. Look, this is my life's work. 26 years fighting for children. This is what we do. You might have this is what we do every single here. day of our lives. Yeah. I mean, I yes, I come join you at this table for a break. 20 hours a day, we fight sex trafficking, the sexual exploitation of children in this country. It's in your neighborhood. It's in every neighborhood. The average yeah. age of porn entry today is boys age eight. 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 Seriously. Whether it's heterosexual sex or oh gay sex, the it's brain of that child's shocking. not ready mm. for a sexual yeah. conversation. Right. It's not. There's not a single feminist organization in this nation or anybody in left, including Joe Biden, mm -hmm. that fights sex trafficking in this country. As a matter of fact, he canceled all the bills Trump signed to defend children against sex. This is a promotion of child rape. The left wants to rape children. They want to, there's 13 states right now lowering the age of consent. Mm -hmm. On their floor, trying to lower it to 13, like a 13-year-old mm. could give consent. Comprehensive sex ed in kindergarten teaches masturbation. That's what Ron DeSantis is combating. This My stuff, gosh. Julie Pickren, who just made the Texas school board praise God, is one of the foremost fighters against this with us. Sign that bill, stamp it in every single state because it's mm -hmm. child rape and they promote child rape. Why? Because all of them are as sick and perverted as can be. They don't want to look at themselves. They want no accountability. They don't want to live a moral lifestyle. So it's easier, like the Romans and the Greeks mm -hmm. of the past, to just mm -hmm. rape the little boys and rape the children. And so how do you do that? You make it normal. Right. You teach them and you mm -hmm. say, lower the age of consent. A child can give consent. No, you're a rapist. You're raping children. We have statutory rape in this country. We have to draw a line. And with the radical element in the LGBTQIA2 plus <laughs> movement, it's never been about tolerance. That's no. what they screamed about the whole yeah. time. Okay, we, we've tolerated it. Yeah. There's, there's never been a problem with that, to, to my knowledge. I mean, there's going to be 
isolated incidents. You but can get mostly, married. Yeah, you can get married now. Yeah. You can do, and, and it was never about that. Mm-mm. It's about acceptance. It's about embracing it. It's about promoting it. And that's what they're doing with our kids promoting now. Promoting it. Stop yep. promoting it to my kids. Yep. I won't have it. Yeah. Yep. I won't have yep. it. You know, I, I look at this and I go, how... How are there enough parents to sign off on this? Because it can't possibly just be educators and people uh, who don't have children, right? It Mm -hmm. has to be, there have to be some parents who are involved and complicit in this. But then I look at Virginia and what happened there, and I'm like, maybe there's hope. Maybe this will be what it takes for parents to finally rise up and say enough is enough. But so far... Other than Virginia, they've been relatively quiet, have they not? Well, look, look, Sarah, and I said, Sarah, I said this before. It's a spirit of life and a spirit of death, and everything that comes with the spirit of death, it's this. They'll never stop. It's mm-hmm. not tolerance. They'll go younger and younger. They want to abort a baby p- post birth. They want to go in and rape a child that's three and be okay with it. They want to. This is what they want to do. So it will never stop, mm-hmm. right? But it's going to be the parents. But if you really look at it. It's those who are a God-fearing people who value life that say you can't touch a child. And those who are not a God-fearing people, whether they're Christian or not, is irrelevant, right? I am, right? But those who are absolutely believing they're God, they're here and you're their subject, they will rape and plunder. Mm. They, they, they will, the stuff we've seen, you know, we, I mean, we're talking about rescuing two-year-olds from being, from being sold for sex five, ten times a day in this country. The fact that anybody in their right mind would not say, stop the bus, mm-hmm. halt all of it, right? Now, talk about the pandemic. You know, pandemic is child rape in this country. That's the pandemic, yeah. right? Yeah. The fact that any, this is not a, a left or right issue. You, you, you're right or wrong. If you're not for stopping it, you're wrong. Mm-hmm. You're wrong. You mm-hmm. touch a child, you're wrong. Yeah, and, and part of the thing with uh, parents across the country is we have to take back our our school boards like they've done in Virginia like they actually did in South Lake Texas here yeah Um, it's in the greater DFW area and they ran against three of the radicals that were on and they blew them out of the school board by 70 percent by a 70 percent vote they they eliminated three of those radicals and, and got some conservatives in there and they just did it in San Francisco, California. That's a great point. Which is amazing. Yeah. It by, can by be overwhelming done. It can margins, be done. It can be yeah. done. You just yeah. have to rise up and you have to be willing to be involved. Yeah. And, and, yeah. and again, if, like, if, if your kids are not important enough for you to get active, what the hell is? Yeah. Right? Nothing. Like it ha- uh, Yes. It nothing. has to be Which your kids. Which is why I'm saying this is the last There's nothing bastion. more important. There is if nothing more important. If you can't fortify the city mm-hmm. around children, then heck, then yeah. you're gone. You're yeah. toast. But you make and a society's point. society's gone. Uh, yes. Right. We keep electing people like in Dallas, Texas, Clay Jenkins. Mm. Okay. County Judge Clay Jenkins. This is the kind of guy on the left that allows this crap to happen. 18 teachers in Dallas County uh, over the last 10 years caught in sexual abuse of children still teach today. This is the kind of stuff that happened. When and that pe- happens all over the country. When people mm-hmm. radically elect people without having any idea what they stand for. You can, and oh, it so happens to be the same guy that shut us down, put masks on kids' faces, mm-hmm, put mm-hmm. kids in plexiglass mm-hmm. boxes, yeah. watch, etc. Watch the police mm-hmm. manhandle me uh, at the Beto event. He was just, right there. Just wa- yeah, he was we're feet standing away right from there. You. Mm-hmm. Police manhandled mm-hmm. you. Beto's mm-hmm. guy. Mm-hmm. Clay Jenkins does nothing because mm-hmm. he's a coward. You're a coward. Mm-hmm. You're a coward. Mm-hmm. If you yeah, were AOC, that. that'd be. Uh, a catastrophe. Right. Exactly. Yes. 100%. Uh, all right. We've got, we're, look, we'll try to be less angry after the break. <laughs> okay. We've got more to come. First, we want to thank our sponsor, Patriot Mobile. So here's the thing, guys. We are talking about uh, having to get active, having to stick together. And we are infinitely more powerful when we stick together and get active. This goes, uh, the same goes for supporting businesses that believe in this country and your right to live free to have free speech, all of those things. That is why we are proud to partner with Patriot Mobile. They are America's only Christian conservative wireless provider. Uh, You gotta check them out, okay? They have the same nationwide coverage, the same cell phone towers as the major carrier. So you're getting the same nationwide coverage. Plus you have peace of mind that your money is supporting your right to free speech. Patriot Mobile has plans to fit any budget. They're gonna save you money from moving away from big mobile and you are going to know that th- that your money, your hard-earned money that you are paying in your bill every month is not going to a company that is going to send some of it uh, as a donation to companies like Planned Parenthood. Don't do that, all right? Go to patriotmobile.com news. You can get free activation with the offer code news. By the way, they love 
veterans, first responders. They love America. So if you are one of those veterans or first responders, uh, you're going to save even more when you make the switch. Support a company that loves America and shares your values over at Patriot Mobile. That is patriotmobile.com slash news. Oh. Uh, you know what? I said I thought maybe we'd come back less angry, but I'm not sure that we have. No, after, we're more angry now. after our no. off air discussion. <laughs> okay, well, this will be, this should cheer you up a little bit. Mm. We're on the subject of Florida. Uh, mm. Florida's doing amazing things, led by Ron DeSantis, of course. Florida is going to become the first state in the nation to formally recommend against. COVID vaccines for healthy children. Uh, this comes from Florida Surgeon General, who has just really been uh, tremendous, I feel, leaps and bounds above uh, any of the other medical professionals in any of the other states. His name is Dr. Joseph uh, Ladapo. I hope I'm saying that correctly. He just announced it. This is obviously defying guidance from the, the CDC uh, that all children ages five to seven should be vaccinated. By the way, this does come after a study, which I read about, I believe it was either the New York Times or the Washington Post. So not a conservative outlet was reporting on the horrible uh, efficacy of this particular vaccine in children uh, yeah. below 11, I believe it was. Yeah, it was. Regardless. Yeah, barely regardless, double digits. Yeah, yeah, regardless. Yeah. And this was only after a month of being fully vaccinated. Right. So regardless, all children ages five to seven should be vaccinated, according to the CDC, which I'm sure mm. has absolutely nothing to do with the fact that it puts money in pharmaceutical companies' pockets. So, I, again, YouTube, I'm just saying, I'm sure it doesn't have anything to do with that, okay? There's <laughs> no conflict of interest here, no conflict of interest to be had. Um, but they are, Florida is going to go ahead and come up with a controversial statement that healthy children who are already not prone to having any sort of mm -hmm. negative outcomes from this particular virus should not be injecting injected with uh, a vaccine that they call a vaccine in which we do not know any sort of long-term ramifications. That's controversial. Yeah. It's controversial. In, in a state where the kids get more vitamin D than probably any other state where we know vitamin D is directly connected. Look, I, what makes me mad about this, and I'm really happy about it, is um, ring, ring, Governor Abbott, you're second again. This is Texas. Yeah. I don't yeah. like being, I like Ron DeSantis. I love Florida. Yeah. I really do. But I don't want to be second. I he's live out in Texas. Texas. He's out Texasing Texas. He's out mm -hmm. Texasing Texas. Again, we're <laughs> late. Heck, at this point, Kentucky will beat us. I mean, mm -hmm. go DeSantis. Mm -hmm. And Come the thing on, is, go. the pandemic is not really a pandemic anymore. Well, Putin ended it. Yes, he did. <laughs> uh, but two months ago, there were 800,000 cases of new infection every day. Two months ago, 800,000. Uh, like a little over three weeks ago, there were 25,000. Now there's something like 2,400 per day on average. So, and the, and the death count, the daily death count is down to 212. We're, we're pretty well past mm -hmm. uh, the scariest part of this. And I think even the CDC is starting to come around to that. Mm -hmm. And Fauci is starting to come around with that, to, to that. Have you even seen him? Rarely. I mean, he I made one statement. I don't even remember what it was. Don't the other remind day. me of the, of the <laughs> Sorry. gerbil. Sorry. But the reason is because what does he have to say? Yep. Are you yep. going to tell yep. me to go get a vaccination now? Yep. Yep. Not no. a booster, Pat. They're dumping vaccines now because people don't want them. Right, mm -hmm. right. So, so again, it's like, why make this push? to get all Crazy. children vaccinated. It's, just to keep the hysteria going. Yeah, it's absolutely insane. Are you saying that when they create hysteria, Pat, that they can actually control the population more? Never Would let you? a crisis go to waste comes to mind. Really? Yeah. Huh. huh. That's hmm. so cynical of you. And how yeah. better to start a crisis for going after the children? Again, are you seeing the pattern here, whether it's sex, vaccines, it doesn't right. matter. Just go for the kids. <laughs> right. Because when you touch a child, when you control point. the child, you control the household. That's a really great point. Yeah. I, so I need mama bears to come step up and dads, the men, step mm -hmm. up. Mm -hmm. You can't just leave this for the women ever. Step up and defend your children for crying out loud. Demand this kind of stuff from your legislators. Go to Texas. Go to Bill Lee in Tennessee. Go to these governors who run on conservatism, right, and say, 
You step up. We want that bill to protect our children. We want no vaccines in children. We want no comprehensive sex ed. Demand it. Yeah. Well, and I mean, meanwhile, in the face of all of this, you know, the White House was asked about this decision of the Florida Surgeon General. And Jen Psaki went on about, uh, you know, well, there are, it's deeply disturbing that there are politicians peddling conspiracy theories out there and casting doubt on vaccinations when it is our best tool against the virus. I'm like... <laughs> To, She's still first, running on that. Yes, and Unreal. at first I think, right? And at first Unreal. I think, there, how does okay. this woman sleep at night? But then I, I'm like, yeah. probably like a baby. No, like a vampire. <laughs> yeah, probably like a baby. No, that's just how the horrible day. they are. Yeah. That, that's yeah. just how horrible they are. Uh, the other day we had uh, nine pages from the CDC about all of the side effects that they're now admitting to. It's Pfizer. It was Pfizer's, yeah. yeah, it wasn't the CDC's. It was actual Pfizer's research that we finally got access to because of the FOIA. Mm -hmm. And it's nine pages in teeny little print, one after another, uh, for nine pages on yep. all of the side effects. Yep. There's a ton, and they know that now. It's not a conspiracy. It's not a theory. It's not trumped up by the right. It's actual fact. I'm honestly um, prone to now, whenever I hear the, 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 uh, the words conspiracy theorists being thrown out, I'm like, that That's person's probably telling the truth. That's right. the truth. That's Absolutely. how, I mean, they've, we they've completely yeah. weaponized Absolutely. that term yeah. to use it gone. against people That's who are just normal. bringing up facts. It's like, yeah. oh, okay, tell me who the conspiracy theorists are yeah. so I know who to believe these yeah. days. Yeah. Uh, all right, we've got more to come, but we've got to take a break. We'll be back. Really good point. Yeah. Uh, today, to commemorate International Women's Day, which what even is that anymore? I'm not sure. But the White House, Joe Biden, has uh, announced that he is requesting $2.6 billion of your dollars from Congress to fund gender equity programs across the globe. Uh, this is part of his oh, 2023 congressional budget request. And if approved, by the way, will double the amount requested for gender equity programs last year. Uh, Biden said in a statement, on this day and every day, let us recognize that all of us have a better future when women and girls can reach their full potential. And together, let's renew our efforts to advance dignity, equality, and limitless possibilities for all very interesting, you guys, coming from the administration who wants to allow mm. men mm -hmm. in women's sports, right. allow men mm. to mm -hmm. beat the crap out of women and mm -hmm. won't even admit what an actual woman is. Now they want women and girls to reach their full potential. What is a woman, Joe? I would love for you to answer that question. Yeah, what is a woman, Jill? Jill mm. Biden. Yeah. Have you had a talk with your husband? You know, or do you care? No, because you inflict elderly abuse on the man, <laughs> right? No kidding. You make him wander in the rose garden and get lost on his way to the bathroom. And do you know what's so sad? I think that a lot of liberals are going to be like, it's just 2.6 billion, as if that's just some, you know, By the tiny little number. But again, global, right? So the answer is no. No, we're not yeah. funding global right. gender equity, right? Yeah. Right. Gender equity. Big difference from equality, yeah. huge difference. It's basically, it's honestly, it's basically affirmative action in a degree. No, they don't care about women. They couldn't give you, when, show me the, show me the money, show me the proof where they ever do anything that's actually really truly for women. No, it's, it's Women's no. Day. It's a great opportunity. Mm -hmm. It's a great opportunity to pander. Mm -hmm. to pander. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. And they don't even really say what equity involves. No, right? they don't. Uh, in the article I read, it said nothing about, okay, what are the specifics? What are yeah. you actually going to do? Is this to get equal pay for equal jobs with, you know, when you have equal experience and skills? That I'm fine with. But, you know, as with the women's soccer team, yeah. uh, that's, that's not about equality because the men bring in 20 or 30 or 50 times as much revenue. Yeah. And we're still making the... The weird little secret about that was the women actually made more than men before all this began. And now they've renegotiated some other deal where they're going to make more still. And they don't bring in 
one tenth no. the revenue the men no. do. Does that not ever figure into this? You know, it, it's interesting too because, as you pointed out, he hasn't really said what his plan is for using this money. Just that they definitely need to allocate it. But he did make yeah. a comment that um, the the pandemic exacerbated some issues for women that uh, it made worse. He said women's participation in the workforce declined. Yeah, gee, you think it had anything to do with oh all of you people gosh. shutting down the Lockdown. schools? I'm freaking mm-hmm. believable. Are you? I'm I mean, <laughs> I'm going to censor myself there. No, it's uh, th- that additional burden was placed upon caregivers. Yeah, you think? And that gender-based <laughs> violence increased. Yeah, which is things that we told you uh, kids need to go mm-hmm. to school for multiple reasons, one of which is that sometimes their home life is not so great, and uh, it would be nice for them to be able to go to school. Sometimes they can't afford to right. eat lunch and dinner at home, and school is the only place that they get that food. Sometimes uh, women actually have to go to work and can't do that when you shut their kids' freaking schools down you absolute imbecile yeah absolutely no yeah it's brain dead it's, it, that whole myth has been debunked by some of the greatest Guys, minds wine. the jordan peterson oh, study the world. after study it's been debunked but, but yeah. It, yeah equal it's got to be equal time in right it's like yeah of course their participation in the workforce I mean, declined who's going to watch right. the kids at home who aren't allowed about? to go to school I mean, but they won't compare apples to no. apples. Hey, but it's they, so they fun when it. you can create the problem and they go, there's this huge problem. Yeah. Yeah. Taxpayer. Throw more money throw at money it. Throw money at it. Yeah. Women oh, are making 81 we, cents on and, the dollar. And while right. we do it, let's go to India and help them figure out whether they're boys and girls. And let's go <laughs> sprinkle some money around the world because the American taxpayer mm-hmm. is so happy that we're getting plundered at the pump that we might as well give you some more to go teach whoever in whatever country some sick narrative. Yeah. You know? I mean, yeah. it's, it's insane. The answer is no. At, at some point, this is where the GOP, where I want the Senate and the House, and we've got some good friends there. There are some. Like... The li- yeah, the list keeps... Got them on both you hands. Can probably, Two sure. hands, right? Yeah, probably, good people. yeah. That's In it. In a GOP, right? Yeah. yeah. Stand the heck up. Yeah. And say, absolutely not. Yeah. And explain why. Yes. Right. Help people understand this myth that has even been disproven by the Washington Post, who did a huge story on this a couple of years ago. Mm-hmm. The myth of women making less when you compare apples to apples. In fact, in America, in some professions, women actually make more than men. Yeah. Uh, ever so slightly more. But it's not 81 cents on the dollar when you compare experience, education level, and mm-hmm. skill set. Mm-hmm. We're coming down to transparency. Pat makes a point about what, what are the programs, what is it? When you get an RFP, a request for proposal from a government, right, to a government mm-hmm. contract, the documentation you have to hand in, it's insane. You go through audits, you got to check financials. Mm-hmm. There's no transparency back the other way. It's right. just taxpayer, I want $2.5 billion from you. Yeah. For what, Joe? No, oh, I don't need to tell you. No traceability, no transparency. And if we say no, you're a sexist. Yeah, you're a sexist. Mm-hmm. No, you should line the program out to the T where we can go with a fine-tooth comb through it and blow holes to smithereens. Mm-hmm. But this is how they load bills as well. Yeah. Just mm-hmm. give me the money. Yeah. Because we're the entitlement group. Right. right you should right. just give it to us. some point, the taxpayer just should say, go jump. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Go yeah. jump. Uh, by the way, I'm, I am a proud sexist. I am, they're they're going to call you that no matter what, <laughs> yeah, so you might are. as well just wear it honorably. Yeah. That's fine. I don't care what they call me. You can call me. You can call me the one that's hunting you down. That's what you can call <laughs> oh my. me. <laughs> Woo, this show, no, it did not get any more relaxed. But that's okay because we're delivering you the news. we got to take a break. We'll be back. <laughs> yeah, but the show is all about the grand uh, You know what? I would apologize for our our. our our passion today, but I'm not going to. I'm not going to because many of you out there, you guys, uh, you send messages all the time, and you're like, you are speaking for us, right? We we are with you. We are we're pissed off too. We're just as pissed off as you, and it feels good to know that you're not alone. There yeah. are actual people delivering the news who aren't absolutely insane. And that is us, obviously. And so if you want more people to be able to watch this program and realize that they are not alone and spread common sense, it would be really helpful if you went over to where you get your audio podcast. Subscribe, rate, and review the news and why it matters. Uh, If you give us a nice review, you may see your review read live on air like the one today from Hick of Sticks, who says uh, the news that matters and why you need it. 
I'm fairly certain that I have watched or listened to every News & Why It Matters show since day one. Oh, that's so nice. The news is often so awful, it's hard to stay informed and not just tune it all out. Sarah mm -hmm. and the gang not only have the news you don't get anywhere else, their humor makes it bearable and gives me a chuckle when it's so desperately needed. I'm not sure how funny we were today, <laughs> but for those of you, if you're first timers, I promise we're usually funny. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just, you know, we talk about the children and it gets us pissed off. And you know what? You should be pissed off. So we're right along there with you. Uh, we appreciate you guys watching. I appreciate you two being here. Yeah. And uh, we will see you guys tomorrow. That's the